Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the Athenian Maker podcast. My name is Aida, coming to you from Athens, Greece, where I live with my dog Rexy. Esi agapi, Rexuli, tishia moromosi. And uh, you can find me on Instagram as the, uh, the Athenian Maker and also on Etsy under the same name. Uh, where I sell my botanically dyed yarns and uh, my eco printed uh, bags. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, what I am wearing. Uh, this is uh, uh, a knit that I made about two or three years ago. I think it was three years ago. It is from a Vogue uh, knitting uh, magazine from issue 2018. Um, I don't remember, was it the spring? It was the fall uh, 2018. And uh, it is, uh, I, I love this uh, sweater. Uh, it has this uh, flounce here on the sleeves. And it has another flounce here. And uh, it is a plain knit stockinet and uh, you just uh, make some increases to create uh, the flounces. And uh, I added this uh, little trim here and on the hem to add a little bit of color. It is knitted uh, in uh, uh, cotton and uh, linen blend from BC Garn. I had bought this yarn from Afrati Malou. It was a lovely story, the center of Athens, but now it is uh, closed, it doesn't exist anymore. It had really beautiful yarns. So let's continue with uh, finished objects. I actually have only one finished object. If you saw the first episode, uh, you saw that I was uh, knitting. Uh, on my peaceable uh, knit uh, mitts from uh, Erika Hoise and they are ready let me wear them I love this pattern it is gorgeous I love uh, all uh, the patterns from Erika Hoise she makes these beautiful mitts Now, uh, I really don't, uh, uh, don't need uh, mitts that are so long here in the cuff and uh, because my wrist is here and it goes up to here and uh, if uh, I were to knit this again, I would do the thumb uh, further down so that uh, I have more of my fingers covered and less here uh, in, in the wrist. So, um, I needed this uh, in, uh, in um, my hand dyed yarn, uh, the blue one uh, is uh, the colorway Marina and uh, it is a shed, pure Shetland wool and I dyed it with indigo while uh, the yellow one uh, is um, is a, a Shetland and Wensley Day blend and uh, I have dyed it with uh, various uh, flowers I really love how they turned out I don't have any other finished ob objects so let's go to works in progress uh, I have a couple of them. So on uh, the la on the first episode, I spoke about uh, I talked about uh, starting a new knitting project, and I wanted to knit um, a raglan sweater, uh, following instructions from uh, the uh, top down sweaters from uh, from the book top down sweaters of Anne Bad, 
and um, I had uh, selected the yarns, uh, the woolen yarns that I wanted to knit. But uh, and I, I did start that and uh, made uh, started uh, a striped uh, raglan sweater following these instructions. But um, I immediately thought that how or why should I knit um, a woolen sweater now in the summer and that I'm not going to wear for at least five months. And so I, I decided to start over uh, with uh, a cotton yarn. And uh, exactly the same design, I had already uh, noted down the, um, uh, the instructions from the book. So I made a new gauge and I started over with a new yarn. So let me show you. The yarn that I started uh, is uh, a yarn that I purchased from Vegan uh, Yarn in Canada. Um, it is uh, an organic cotton and I bought uh, a cone. It is this big cone. And um, um, it is an organic cotton, so um, it is perfect for summer. And uh, as I wanted to make uh, stripes, I um, decided to dye a uh, part of it uh, and uh, I dyed it with, I used pomegranate spills to dye with it and I took this color. I used um, 150 grams of the yarn and uh, about 250 grams of um, the pomegranate pills. I first mordanted uh, the yarn with uh, alum and cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is not necessary for uh, cotton yarns. You use it uh, only in wool so that it protects wool. Uh, but uh, it, uh, another uh, feature of it, uh, of the cream of tartar, is that it makes color bri colors brighter. So I wanted that, that's why I added uh, also a little bit of uh, cream of tartar on it. This is what I have left, and because I will show you how much I have knitted so far. So let me show you. This is uh, the sweater. Um, you start from the top and um, right here actually you have all the stitches for the neck uh, in the back. And then you start, uh, as I wanted a v-neck, you start to make increases. Uh, according to the pattern, I should have stopped in creases about right here, but I wanted a deeper uh, v-neck, so I continued. And uh, this is uh, an oversized uh, sweater, but it will not stay like this because uh, when I will wash it, uh, it will shrink and so it will become smaller. I don't know how much smaller because I didn't measure the swatch. And what I could have done is uh, to measure uh, how many centimeters my swatch was before washing it and then to see after uh, washing it uh, how much uh, uh, less it was, so, but I didn't do that. So I have finished the body and I have knitted also uh, the neckline. I did the neckline yesterday. I, I did uh, two by two ribbing. And uh, the stripes are uh, two, uh, two rows of white and two rows of uh, yellow. I wanted uh, at first to make it with, fur, uh, with um, bigger stripes, but um, I wasn't sure. Uh, I wanted five uh, rows of each color and I tried to do that. But uh, that meant that uh, I, I had to cut the yarn on every row 
because it was uh, a longer distance and so uh, I would have to weave in on those ends and I didn't want to do that so um, I just made uh, a two, by, a two rows uh, repeat on every color and um, I carried the yarn uh, on, every, uh, on every change of color so now I have to I have here the stitches that I have uh, left from the bodies and I just have to cast on uh, the, in the arm uh, uh, some extra stitches and knit the sleeves. It will not be uh, a long sleeve, like maybe I would knit like um, 5 centimeters or, some, or less, maybe 5 centimeters in total, I think, well, uh, in total um, together with the ribbing. So this is it and I did here the increases with yarn over the raglan. I think that this construction uh, is perfect uh, for cotton yarns because um, I had knitted, I knitted last year a yoke uh, in uh, cotton and you could see every a single increase. It was a, a top-down yoke and so I, I made increases. And you, every increase was so visible and I really didn't like how it looked. But here the knitting looks very smooth and uh, the increases are uh, a design feature. So I really love how it turned out and I can wait to finish it. I cannot tell when, <laughs> probably uh, within this week I'm going to finish it and uh, so that I can wear it. So this is it about uh, my knitting work in progress. And uh, now I will show you a little bit of uh, my weaving. I, I showed you last time uh, that uh, I had this uh, weaving project for uh, over a year that I had not uh, worked at it at all. And I'm very glad that I picked it up because I enjoyed so much um, uh, weaving and um, I spent like about three days. Uh, I sat for two hours and uh, did what I will show you now. Um, it takes a lot of time uh, to see some progress on this because it is uh, in a very fine yarn. But I don't mind because I'm not in a hurry and I just... Um, I want to enjoy it so let me show you so I did I had done up to here the last time and uh, now I have done these uh, mountains so what you do is uh, I I mark with uh, a pen I don't see can you see it right here that I have marked my uh, what I'm, I'm weaving now? Uh, I mark a shape with uh, the pen and uh, I start at the center. So because this has uh, it, it, it is uh, taller in the center than on the sides. So you have to start um, uh, weaving from the center and, uh, and go to, towards the side. But more you go up than on the sides. My explanation is horrible, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, as I said on uh, uh, the previous time, I want, uh, when I finish it, I want to use it as a back panel on a jacket that I'm going to sew. And uh, since this is not going to happen until uh, autumn, uh, I don't mind, uh, no matter how much time it takes. Um, I don't care really. So, and uh, I really enjoyed, it was so meditative to weave in and um, I just don't know why for one year I didn't uh, pick it up at all. Uh, now I think that I'm, I'm going to work for it at least for a while. So this is it, the weaving project.
And uh, now the last uh, work in uh, progress is uh, um, a sewing project that I showed you last time. This is, uh, I forgot to bring here the pattern. Uh, this is a pattern by uh, Pauline Alice. Um, she is a French uh, designer that lives in Spain. And it is the Reina uh, shirt. And uh, it is almost finished. I have, uh, it has the sleeves. And um, I just, this morning I added uh, the neckband that goes to a tie that you tie in front. And uh, it has a back yoke. And uh, the front uh, closes uh, with buttons, but you don't make buttonholes, you add some loops. The pattern has you that you take uh, a piece of fabric and um, you sew it and you turn it around and you make loops with it. But uh, it was so thin and so narrow, the tube that it created, and I could not turn it. So I took some bias binding that I had and used that for the loops. I, I hope it works well in the end. So I just have to add the buttons on the other side. Here are the ties. So I have to add the buttons now. It needs a lot of buttons and I hope that I find some in my stash. I have not decided yet for the color. Should it be white or black? What do you think? And uh, all that is left right now is uh, the hem. To turn on the hems, also on the sleeves and add the buttons. And this is ready. So this is a very easy pattern. And since you don't have to make any buttonholes, and um, it, I think that it is beginner friendly. Uh, if you want to sew a shirt and uh, want to avoid sewing buttonholes, this is uh, the perfect uh, solution for that. As a pattern, it is uh, very well drafted. I would just, uh, the, on, uh, the only thing that I would want to be different is to have more notches and there are so many places that I would like to have notches <laughs> uh, that, to make the construction easier, but uh, in, in general it's a good pattern. I made only one uh, change, I had uh, sewn this in the past and I had, uh, as I have uh, wide arms, uh, it didn't fit me very well in the arms, so this time I changed a little bit the pattern. So this is the pattern piece for the sleeve. And uh, what I did was uh, I made two cuts here, from here up to almost in the end, but not I didn't cut through, and also here. And... Uh, I opened up where the cutting was and I added uh, another piece of, fab of um, paper. And so the result is, as you can see, that it is uh, on the hem, it is wider, but the cup is exactly the same, it didn't change anything. And so this one now, because I tried it, it fits me very well. Um, also, I would like uh, what I would like to add is that uh, in the construction, I finished uh, the side seams with uh, French seams. I like this technique a lot. So, it, French seams give this clean finishing. Uh, what you do is actually you sew um, uh, the good sides together. Uh, while in, uh, in normally you have to do the opposite um, and no, I said it wrong. 
uh, you when you want to make the French seams, uh, you have the fabric the wrong side together, and so you do the first seam on on the right of the fabric, and after you have done that, for example, if there is a seam here, you turn it around. Okay, I'm horrible at explaining this. <laughs> You turn it around and this means that you have captured uh, the, the raw edges inside and uh, now with uh, uh, right sides together you uh, seam for the second time. I doubt that anyone <laughs> understood what I meant. Anyway, this is the, uh, the inside of the French seam. And on the sleeves because uh, I'm not uh, I have tried it in the past doing French seams, but I always end up with wonky seams. So I just used the bias binding to finish uh, the armhole. And hopefully this will also be finished soon, so that I can wear it. And uh, now about uh, let's talk about uh, plans for the future. So uh, first of all, I have uh, from this pattern from a uh, Batterick 5550. Uh, it, it is mirrored unfortunately, but uh, you can see the design. I would like to make uh, these shorts here, and uh, also. At some point, I want to make this view here, which is a scored version. But first, I will start with the shorts. And I have picked uh, the fabric for that. It is uh, this one. This is... Uh, this is I, I'm not sure what uh, sort of fabric. It's a cotton and elastin fabric that I have from Minerva Crafts. I am one of the brand ambassadors in Minerva Crafts uh, and uh, Minerva.com. And uh, I had this fabric from one of Minerva's projects that, uh, and this one was left over from that project. Um, it is uh, like a thick cotton poplin. And um, I, I hope that it is enough. I think that it is enough to make these shorts. And uh, I just want to try first the pattern to see how it fits me. This one is a vintage pattern and it comes uh, in sizes uh, 14 to 18. I saw the uh, pattern measurements inside and uh, I think that maybe it will be okay to do a 14 or and grade up to 16. I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly. I will have to measure the pattern pieces so that I'm sure that it will fit me well because I have a narrow waist but uh, I'm wide in the, at the hips. So uh, definitely I have to do some grading there. So I want to first uh, try it on this fabric and then uh, maybe use a, a better one. A better one, I mean uh, a more uh, beautiful one <laughs> with some color or prints on it, so because this is fine. And uh, so this is uh, the actually uh, the most, um, the one that I'm definitely going to make after I finish the blouse. But I am also uh, thinking uh, of another one. Uh, this is Simplicity 8014. It is this dress here, and I want to make this one. And I have chosen a fabric for that. It is this um, African wax, uh, cotton wax uh, fabric. I really love the colors on this and the honeycomb design. Or is it like um, cubes? Yes, maybe it's a combination of both. So I bought this fabric uh, when uh, I was in South Africa about uh, five years ago. 
I don't I don't know if it is a product a pro, it is uh, um, it is produced there but I just found it in a flea market and because I love the colors and uh, the shapes I just needed to have it and um, so I think that it would be great in a dress and I have enough uh, it is about uh, two and a half meters uh, I think it, it, it's enough for this dress so this is it uh, for uh, today's episode I hope uh, you enjoyed it and uh, Rexy thankfully was very quiet because there were no cats passing by in the garden or neighbors uh, from the entrance so it was great um, I hope to see you next time I also uh, would like uh, to ask you if you would like to comment down below uh, what are your uh, projects at the moment, knitting, sewing or whatever crafts uh, you enjoy. Uh, I would really like to hear from you uh, so that it's not just me staying here and talking to myself. And from me and Rexy, so from me and Rexy, have a nice day and um, happy making! <laughs>